Jiggy Cat On a damn feeling spree This is not good so And you can't mimic my energy 100 round drum And me hanging like a centipede Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Nagato's Revenge, and hopefully everyone is doing okay for today. For today's video, we're gonna be jumping straight into the Vita scene, and we're gonna be checking out a new homebrew application called Hexflow Launcher. And this is an application where it's basically a 3D GUI homebrew and game launcher. So if you guys are familiar with the Xbox 360 scene, and once I probably edit out this video, I'll have like a little picture or a little annotation so you understand what I'm saying. If you guys know about the Aurora dashboard, this is basically the Aurora dashboard for the playstation vita um but with all of that getting out the way just like any of my other videos we're going to be taking a look at the prerequisites and anything that i'll state will be in a link in the description down below as well as the pinned comment so first things first um you need a modded playstation vita or pstv that's already hacked in some shape or form so whether if you're using hankaku hankaku enzo uh h on core h on core 2 or the trinity exploit as long as your ps vita can run unsigned code and basically install applications with vita shell then you're good to go um this does work from firmware 3.60 to 3.73 i am using my 3.60 um pch uh 1001 vita so basically the original oled model um as well you need Vita Shell 2.2. You also need a Wi Fi connection. You also need Fazla FTP client or one FTP if you're going to be transferring via with the FTP method. Or what I'm going to be doing today is the USB charging cable method. So you need your uh, PSV, excuse me, PS Vita's USB charging cable. Some other prerequisites that we need for today is PlayStation Vita games or PS1 games or PSP titles that are already pre installed onto your device. So, of course, have your games ready. And what we need is the two homebrew applications, which is hexflowlauncher.vbk this is the actual homebrew itself and then what we're going to be doing is the hexflow covers and background archive and this just contains all of the playstation vita's um box art and cover art and as well as ps1 games and psp titles well all of that getting out the way we're going to go ahead and tune in to the ps vita as well as the pc and get everything set up so i'll meet you guys there Alrighty guys, assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, we're ready to go and get started on the PS Vita side of things. So as of right now, I'm already assuming that your device is modded in some shape or form. If you guys don't know how to mod your PlayStation Vita, I will have a card right now and also the video in the link in the description and in pinned comments. So if you are trying to do this on a OFW system or official firmware, you go ahead, convert your system into like a Hankaku um, firmware and basically you could follow along. Um, but what that being out the way, what you also need of course which i stated before you need your video game so of course you can see i have a ton of ps vita titles here so i'm good to go with this as well if you have playstation 1 games or psp titles on your vita um it's all applicable so of course you just need games um what we're going to do now is open up vita shell so i'm assuming you already have that installed and that's something primarily everybody has installed um before getting on a modified system but once you're on vita shell we're going to go ahead and get started on the transferring process so right now if you're going to be transferring over a usb cable like i am this is the recommended way i am doing as well since it's faster go ahead and follow along and if you're going to be transferring over with the ftp method via with like files hello or win scp then you can transfer your files that way so first things first what you want to do is hit start on your console and then if you're going to be transferring over with ftp make sure um you know you have the select button set to ftp if it's on usb you're going to need to plug in a usb cable from one end to your pc as well as one into the ps vita so basically just connect them both up and then you're going to transfer files that way so if i were to ftp and hit select make sure your wi-fi is on you will get your ip address and then you could just type it into file villa or win scp and make sure you also type in the port if you guys have any questions on how to really transfer your files over um via with usb or ftp method i will have links to both of those videos in the link in the description down below and probably a card right here but since i'm going to be doing a usb what i'm going to do is hit select and then transfer over to usb and then you'll probably hear my computer real quick once i transfer or probably not but right now i am on usb mode or you just heard it there um what we're going to do is go to the pc get everything transferred over and get our downloads so right now i'll meet you guys back onto the pc 
Alrighty, we're back onto the PC as of right now. You should already have your PS Vita connected to your device if you're going to be transferring over USB method. If you're going to be using Fosla FTP or one SCP for FTP, um, then you can go ahead and utilize that. But right now, what I'm going to do is showcase on File Explorer that my PS Vita is connected. So you can see all of my um, directories. And this is my memory card, aka UX0 for the PlayStation Vita. And we're going to be transferring over the hexflow.vbk. As you've seen, I did this earlier, but I'm going to just delete it just because to show you guys on how to do this from you know start to finish right now what we're going to do is open up our web browser you can use firefox internet edge or google chrome and in the link in the description down below i'll provide two websites where you're going to be basically downloading the hexflow file so first things first is the homebrew application and then we're going to get our cover art from this website first thing what i will do is just kind of give a brief like synopsis of what is on the hexflow launcher it basically says here it's a 3d cover flow like launcher for ps vita and it displays and launches your games in in a certain you know custom style and it uses like a 3d user interface so if you're used to like aurora on the xbox 360 and that like dashboard then you kind of get what this homebrew application is about um this does support uh custom covers um and they basically will go into this directory right here as well um i will not be covering over this since i did have some issues but you can um you Utilize custom music if you want to custom backgrounds and you can actually have this auto booted to your ps vita meaning that like once you turn on your playstation vita it will auto boot to this homebrew application and then you could just launch your games from there so it kind of gives your ps vita a custom new ui rather than like the regular old live area i know i kind of like skipped over some important things but i will leave everything in the link in the description down below for you guys to read one thing i do want to actually cover as i'm reading this right now um if you're going to do psp and ps1 titles you need to make sure that your content id of your games and your certain directories match up with the cover art and i'll kind of explain a little bit more about that later once we get to the cover art section but let's just go ahead and focus on downloading the release so all you got to do is go to the release page download the latest release so this was released in november 28 2020 0.5 version and voila you're done with the first step second thing what we need to do is go to the second um link in the description which is going to be called hexflow covers and it's going to basically have a ton of covers for the ps vita psp and ps1 titles i think the file is actually like 718 megabytes so all you got to do is go into releases go and download the hexflow so yeah it's going to take a little while for me to download but i already previously downloaded this on my console or my actual pc so let's go ahead and get our two downloads but once your thing is downloaded it'll be in your download section or wherever you store them at um right now i'm gonna go and get the hex flow final cover art right here and i'm gonna get the vpk so i already had it actually on my desktop but you can see here that or this is actually an extra copy but here you go so we have the vpk this is the actual homebrew application here and you're going to have hexflow cover final 2021 14. all you got to do is extract this out with winwar 7 zip and all of the copies of the cover arts will be contained into this archive right here so let me open this up right here um here are the backgrounds that this actually comes with via with hexflow so you can have these custom backgrounds if you want for your playstation vita in the actual homebrew hexflow application and if i go into covers really quick um you can see here what i mean with content id so for example if you're having a playstation one title um make sure it's matching up with the same id so if i had like the ses i think european version of ridge racer it needs to be corresponded with that i noticed my ps1 and psp titles are kind of mixed up so they're not going to really display but your playstation vita ones should display just fine unless you mess with the title id somehow but regardless what we're going to do is go ahead and focus on getting this transferred as well this hexflow thing has a readme um you can open this up and it just contains just some stuff on where to basically place your cover art so you can see right here this is the actual file directory where we need to place this at so let's go ahead and get started in transferring our file over let's open up our playstation vita Let's go ahead and transfer over the first file, so hexflow vpk, and put it to the root of your, or not the USB, but the UX0 memory card. Once you do that, what we're gonna do is go into the data folder right here, and I'll actually, what I'll do is 
delete this hex flow folder right here and then we're going to actually create a new one um just so i can show you guys on how to get the setup you can see all of my files that was in here was the cover art so it may take a little while to delete but um I'm going to show you guys on how to get the cover art set up. So what I'm going to do right now, since it's looking like it's taking a little bit too long, I'm going to cut the video here and then come back uh, once that is finished deleting. Alrighty, so as of right now, the folder is just deleted. Once again, we're going to start from the root of our USB, go inside of the data folder, and then we're just going to follow along where we're going to have to put this exact file at. So first things first, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name it exactly as a capital H hex flow and then inside of that folder we're going to call it covers and this is where all of our box art is going to be so make sure it's capital letters if i could spell today and then right here this is where we're going to have all of our things at so ps vita just go ahead and create one right here and then what we're going to do i'm going to minimize this we're going to go inside of our hex flow folder and we're just going to drag and drop in the cover section we're going to place these three folders into this directory right here. So the PS Vita box art games are going to go in that one. Uh, same thing with the PSP. They're going to transfer over to the uh, USB or the Vita per se. And then we're going to get that done. So right now I'm just waiting for this to all drag over. Once again, doing this with the USB method is such or way much faster, especially if you're doing this via with like a USB 3.0, uh, if you have a USB 3.0 port. Uh, but if you're doing this with Fazla FTP client, unless you're doing this like with a Ethernet connection on the PSCV, um, this may take a while since there is a ton of files in here. Like for example, yeah, there's over 8,000 pictures. It may not seem a lot, but um, if I actually go into properties here, yeah, it's transferring over 379 megabytes. And especially if you're using Wi-Fi um, and in determining on your speeds, it may take a while. So what I'm going to do here is cut the video, wait for all of my pictures to transfer over to the actual uh playstation vita then we're going to go back into vita show and get everything set up in terms of installing the vbk and then hopefully hex flow will work for us so i'll meet you guys once that is all finito okay so after like two or three minutes everything has successfully transferred over to our vita so once again like i always like to do is just to re-verify all of our files has successfully transferred over let's go to the root of our usb we have hex flow here so we're good to go on there and then let's go into our data folder go into hex flow covers and we should have our ps1 games and you can see all of our cover art here once again psp titles all in here and then vita all in here so what we're going to do now is transfer back to the playstation vita get everything set up and we're going to be ready to get started on getting the vpk installed on live area so i'll meet you guys back on the vita okay so as of right now we're back onto the playstation vita what i'm going to do in vita shell right now is just launch up hex flow so make sure you have unsafe homebrew already unticked and then once you fully install that um what we're going to do is go to live area and we're going to get everything set up within that homebrew application, which is pretty simple. So just waiting for it to do its thing. And let's go ahead and back out of Vita shell. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to hex flow and launch the application. Now, when this is your very first time um, opening up the application, or if you have a ton of PlayStation Vita titles like I do, and just have a bunch of homebrewing games, um, it will take a lot of time for it to boot up since um, it's trying to accumulate all of the cover art and basically any of like the system files at boot. So it may take a little while. So if you have like maybe three or four or five games, shouldn't be an issue. But since I have like over 200 plus games on my 256 gigabyte uh, micro SD card, it will take a little while so just waiting for it to initialize its properties and hopefully um it won't take too long but i'll just show you guys um just for this instance um how long it usually takes so for me it probably takes like 30 seconds um but it does look really really cool um once you get it launched up um and it, i actually really do enjoy the ui and i'm just waiting for it to do its thing so if it takes a little bit too long, then I may just cut the video in half, but um, this is normal for it to boot up. So don't think like it has froze or anything of that nature. It's just, um, you know, that's just a homebrew application loading up a ton of games at once.
So actually for this, since it's taking a little bit too long, I am gonna cut the video, but once it's back on, I'll show you how Hexflow actually looks like. Okay, so as of right now, you can see here that Hexflow is now launched up and you can see all of my PlayStation Vita titles are in its correct location or basically it's in alphabetical order and you see all of the cover art from the game. So what you can do, which is pretty cool, is hit circle on your device and you could get like different views on depending on your style. So if you like this format, then you can change it to that way. Um, if you like the big folder format like this, um, it looks pretty cool too. I kind of like this format personally, but let's say um, I'm ready to play a game. All you got to do is hit X to launch and voila, here is Persona 4 Golden and it's launching on my PlayStation Vita. By the way, speaking of Persona 4 Golden, if you guys haven't tried out the HD patch and have a modded Vita, please go ahead and check out my Persona 4 tutorial on that. But um, you guys kind of get the gist of hex flow. And yeah, essentially that is how to start it up. So if I go back into hex flow, um, one thing I will showcase is some features within it where you could change like the music and background so i'll show you guys a little bit of the settings before i go but yeah that's how essentially how easy it is to set up hex flow not a home or not a hard homebrew application to set up um it really only takes about five to ten minutes i know i usually go over a lot in detail but um what i'm going to do is cut off the video here once again since it takes a little bit for me to boot up and then we're going to go and check out the settings so i'll meet you guys back for that Okay, so we're back into the homebrew application once again. If you wanna hit start onto your device, it will prop up the settings menu. So if you wanna change your startup categories from like the PS Vita games or homebrew, if you can, um, or you wanna have all, you can do that. If you want uh, sounds on, you can have that. Uh, if you wanna change the theme color to red, blue, yellow, or whatever um, your choice, you could do that. I'm gonna leave mine's blue. Um, if you also want to change off like your English settings or you want to download cover art if you're missing any, you could do that. But yeah, that's essentially how to utilize some settings. Um, one thing what I like to say too, um, you could kind of fast toggle by hitting L or R. So instead of like pressing one by one with the D pad, if you got a bunch of games like I do, and let's say if I want to play a game that starts with the letter, I don't know, resistance, for example, letter R, then I could just go ahead and scroll back and get that. But um one thing i also want to say as well i believe if you hit square yeah you could toggle over and play your psp titles from this way too the reason why my cover art looks a little bit different if i actually go into the details category you can see that my app id doesn't correspond with the actual um playstation one title of like dance dance revolution disney miss or excuse me mix for example so that's something to keep a note on to have like your file names and your certain directories the same as the actual launch title but um you can see here that um if i want to play homebrew i can uh ps vita titles my playstation portable titles and emulators i could launch from here so it's really cool that um you know you can do all of this in one menu and have a cool gui but yeah essentially this is how you set up hex flow hopefully if you guys um have any questions feel free to hit me up on twitter or on my discord or in the link in the description down below or me aka the comment section uh but with all of that getting out the way my name is nagato's revenge once again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Revenge here. Hope you guys did enjoy today's video. With that being out the way as well, I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well. It's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content, whether it be for the Vita, PS4, PS3, and such and so forth. As well, if you want to be in the mix of things and you want to join my official community, you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you could become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace